Thank you for tuning in to the Button Road Show. So, one of my favorite things about YouTube has become the ability to look up all these clips that draw emotions without having to watch either the entire pay-per-view for the wrestling events or the entire movie for like something that we're about to talk about now. I feel like Remember the Titans was ahead of its time. I feel like Denzel definitely should have got a uh, Academy a nod for that, and he didn't. A uh, Academy Award nomination, and he didn't. But like they said in the movie, your Hall of Fame in my book. <laughs> your Hall of Fame in my book, coach. <laughs> <laughs> Love that movie. This is a movie that can easily give anyone goosebumps, especially if you appreciate a good sports story. These last-minute plays, these touchdowns, even these entrances in the wrestling arena when you get the pop with the crowd, you see people's raw emotions come out. And to me, that makes for the best cinema, bro. I think uh, more so than that, I think is the raw emotion. You think of a movie like this, or even uh, I'll take it one, you know, that's in in the same ilk as this. Uh, Just remember the Titans. Um, Friday Night Lights. Um, And that was a movie that, uh, you know, I love also. You know, love it. Was that Jamie Foxx, LL Cool J? No, that was... uh, Any Given Sunday. Any Given Sunday. And I love that movie also. I love that movie... Specifically for the Al Pacino speech at the end. The, I can't make you do it. Like, I love that speech. I, like, I, I, like I, I've said it a bunch of times. Like, when I'm down, I need a little kick in the ass. I need to need some energy. Like, I listen to that speech. I watch that clip because how deep he gets. And what blows my mind is when these movies particularly are based on, like, true stories. Like or when inspired they, by true events sometimes. A lot of, they, they'll, they'll take, they'll, a, they'll put they'll the take fluff artistic in there liberties, you know, but uh, they gotta essentially make it inspired movie. by true events. And, you know... Uh, Even, like, when in Remember the Titans, Denzel gets all the students up at, like, fucking 3 o'clock in the morning, and they got to go for that run. They got to go running rain. through uh, Gettysburg to the Gettysburg... Uh, well, they, 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 go, they go running through Gettysburg to the Gettysburg... Uh, to the Gettysburg, uh, to like a uh, like a graveyard in Gettysburg, they run through the woods. I don't think that that was Hollywood enough for me to say that that didn't happen in real life. No, that I'll say that happened, or if it didn't happen, something like that happened in that area. If it, if they didn't, I doubt they ran from where they were to Gettysburg. But some another Civil War area, you know, type battlefield or something like that. And you know that story for that time. They were you know that segregation and everything was powerful. That too. was powerful because what it comes after that is left side, strong side. And you know, all right, fellas, we'll stay out here all night if we have to. <laughs> and then you know, guy doesn't block for Rev. And then you know, Gary jumps on him like, "What was that? It wasn't blocking." He's like, "Come off it!" And then he's like, ah, "You don't need a haircut, boy." Like, left what? side, strong side. Left side, strong side, left side, <laughs> and then it, and then sunshine and, and comes then, in. That, that was like, you see, that was another moment in the movie that gave you goosebumps. That that unity that you got to, wit, you saw raw unity, and I'm pretty sure that shit like that happens in real life too. It, I mean, it does. As someone who's played sports, man, like there's moments where just you come together. Like there's just moments that can't be explained, man. That shit happens, and it just has to happen. That and way. you, as an athlete, I you and this more. was something. This was something after we released the uh, the Tony's video when you were talking about winning the city championship. Like that's something that I don't credit you enough for. It's something, I mean, now at this point that was done more than, what, it's about 15 years soon, 14 years, we'll say 14 years ago. Yeah, but you got to experience that Remember the Titans moment. It, man, that I'm was, pretty sure at that stadium or, or then that gym, wherever you was. St. Francis College. Then you yeah. got that pop. 
Bro, it was just, it's it's, it's it's crazy to think about. It's crazy to even describe because, I mean, to get into the whole story of that season or just, like, the run we had to go on to get to the playoffs and then it's win, it, win or go home. Like, and we were in win or go home mode just to get to the playoffs because we had to be above 500, 500 or better. And we were 4-8. and eight. We had five games left, which means we had to win out. We couldn't lose a game or we were done for the season. And my basketball, my high school basketball career was essentially done. Uh, we were able to win out, um, you know, and get to the playoffs and then reel off five more wins as a 23 seed. And we beat every team we beat was higher seeded than us. And we knocked off like three single digit seeds. And it was unheard of at the time. No other team had done it in the history of, you know, you know, PSAL, New York City Public School Athletics. And uh, so in, in that moment. Did you f- get that Gary Burke tear feeling, bro? The first per the first thing I wanted to do, I tried to run into the stands to go to my mom and sister, and they wouldn't let me. Like that was the first thing I tried to do. Who wouldn't let you? The coach, uh, the security in the gym, they wouldn't let us into the stands to celebrate with the fans. And uh, you know it was, was kind of whack, but uh, you know we had great celebrations the rest of the week. Uh, when we got back to school, had a couple of pizza parties that were uh, obviously you know where the pizza parties come from. When you have a pizza party in Bushwick, <laughs> you know <laughs> best pizzeria in Brooklyn at best pizzeria in Brooklyn. That's Tony's Pizza. We both wearing our caps right now. Yes, while we're recording, man. Shout yeah. out to Sal. And um, it's just that moment, bro. It was just one of the greatest, one of the greatest moments, like feelings I, I still remember in my life. Um. And getting experience, and it's just like, and I tell people, like, I think a lot of people, like, teams, people who didn't play team sports, you see it, like, with, with like not having a camaraderie, not being able to build relationships with people. That brings a whole other dynamic to a personality. So even if you're, like, the shyest person, you look at somebody that was as socially awkward in the public's eye as, like, Kawhi Leonard, and you see what he did for that team. You see where he's grown to now. Like it develops you as a fucking human being. I think about that basket, that that teardrop basket that was just bouncing on the rim, and he's just standing at, behind it like the fucking line, and he's just dude, like he's just curved. Everybody watched it. Everybody, like, it was mean, like in slow motion. It was I like mean, a fucking seen slow that play motion go, moment. It's one of, I mean, it's an iconic moment in NBA history, um, because of, I mean, he hit the shot over someone who's about five, six inches taller than him. He was on the move. He was leaning. And that bounce and the rattle, like, it was just, it was insane, man. And then two, you are a part of that. Well, and here's the thing that made our, our season, uh, you know, my senior year all the sweeter, was we lost in the Sweet 16 in overtime my junior year. And that was a heartbreaking loss because we had the lead going into the fourth quarter. And this was a team that, same thing happened to us twice in the season, playing them. They were in our division. And uh, we had one of our best players come down and tie the game and send it to overtime. And a couple of bad calls blew it for us by the refs, you know, that we felt were horrible calls. And, uh, you know, we were all, you know, everybody went around school. You know, I was crying pretty bad in the locker room. A few of us were, but I took it very hard. You know I'm a competitor. So Um, imagine if everything you're saying right now, the entire story of what transpired, was turned into a beautiful piece of cinema directed by the top Hollywood guy and you got everybody in the fucking theater crying feeling that same emotion that you felt when you lost the Sweet 16 and then feeling that same high when you went back and won the city championship which is essentially what these movies are built of there you have the struggle and then you have the solution you have even more than a struggle and solution you have you have the ebbs and flows, cause remember and remember the Titans. It's all you know the racial tension and everything going on, and then uh, you know they come together at camp, but then they get back, and then it's like all right, they have to we're deal back with the in the real world. world. Yeah, and then you know they overcome that in their way, overcoming some. Different, it takes a lot for them to overcome. You know, for them not a lot, but they overcome multiple different things, and then you know have the Gary Bear tear incident where he's paralyzed. You know, you have that happen. And then, you know, they overcome that. So in movies, you have these constant where the ebbs and flows. But they always eventually, you know, I, well, I'll say Friday Night Lights, the movie. They didn't win the state championship. They lost. That's one that ends in a loss. You know, a movie like a Coach Carter that ends in a loss. You know, all these game movies don't always end in a win. Did you see the movie The Wrestler with Mickey Rourke? 
I've seen it once, man, in its entirety, and I don't remember it all. That, you want to talk about flows? That movie ends <laughs> with, with what seems to be his final moments. Like, he just had a heart surgery. He refuses to give up wrestling because he don't want to work at 7-Eleven no more, slicing meat. And the last shot that they show is him doing this super fly Jimmy Snucker pose off the top rope. And he's crying. <laughs> it's like, yo, <clears throat> there's a reason why that movie was able to resurrect Mickey Rourke's career. Because if you feel for wrestling, what you feel for football or for basketball or for any one of like these movies. I was movies, trying to discuss with my brother yesterday. Um, I had a co-worker wear an NWO hoodie, black and white. You know, nowadays I've told you this. I see a lot of people wearing, you know, DX club stuff, you know. And it's like, I don't get the feeling you were a real, you know, WWE fan, WWF, WCW, and WODX fan. I don't get that feeling, at least not the way we were, the way we were on it. So to this person, when I saw the hoodie, I was like, yo, dope hoodie. And you know what I did? Too sweet. I gave, a, I, gave the, I gave the test to see. It wasn't a, I didn't do it. I didn't say too sweet. And I just put this up. And <laughs> yeah, I wish you guys could yo, see. And then she she said, too sweet. I was like, for, for <laughs> life. <laughs> and the, the, then there's a person there who knows nothing about wrestling who's like, what the fuck was that? Like, you got to understand and love like, wrestling. You don't to get know it. what we talking like, about, Like, for you bro. to get that, like I told my brother, like, and he's like, why'd that even matter? Yo, because I'm like, how many people would remember that and know what that was for, bro? And I was like, and you for was a, life. and I was like, and that, and I was like, and that just shows you weren't the same type of wrestling fan we were. If you bought merchandise based on reunion episodes, you can't talk to us. You can't even sit the at only, our table. And you know what? I honestly say, son, I wish, you know, my parents, my, my dad, my parents, I honestly say, I won't say couldn't afford. They just didn't give us, you know, the, you know, didn't have the uh, disposable income for when we went to these events to buy our souvenirs. So we just have the memories. You know, I say all the time, man, I want to buy an Austin 360. You know how bad I want an Austin 316 shirt? And like the original D Generation X, like with the black and white with the X, and yeah, I, but that 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 what you just said right there <clears throat> is a huge differentiator in the caliber of human being that follows wrestling because you got all these people now that they might have great jobs and disposable income and all that shit, and they go to these events. And they're wearing the shirts, they're wearing the wristbands, they got the belt around their fucking waist. They're going above and beyond to try to convince everyone around them that they're a true wrestling fan. But they don't know who Arn Anderson is. They don't know who Dusty Rhodes is. Bro, I was explaining to uh, same guy, talking about why he hated wrestling. He brought up Gold Dust and he said his son was a big fan. But he thought it was a mockery to homosexuals with the whole gold dust thing. I was like, you know, he wasn't gay. He was just flying. Blah, 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 blah. But I told him that was, you know, a Vince He's walking down the yeah. ring with, uh, Mar- with Marlena. Yeah. But I told I, I told him, though, uh, you know, it was a thing between Vince McMahon and Dusty Rhodes. And that was his, to get back at him. Hey, this is what I'm make his son do. You want to wrestle? Cool. This is what you're going to do. Because look at what he did. Cody Rhodes was Cody Rhodes for a long time until he started gaining traction. And then what do you have to become? Stardust. How long was he Cody Rhodes? And the second he started gaining traction, he had to become Stardust. And, and now he's fucking destroyed. He's about to destroy Vince. That's all shoot interviews, shit that you hear behind the scenes. They're talking about this shit. They're talking about the shit that gives you the goosebumps when you actually go back and watch when the footage. When you see it, when you go back, bro. Like when I think about... You know, the night we were there when Triple H came back, man. The night we were there after Brock Lesnar won his first title, bro. We were there at that Raw the next night. Like, that was my last live event I ever went to. Wrestling was the first time Brock Lesnar won the title. Who we are, who we are, so we tell them, so we tell them. We're Bud and Roach, we're Bud and Roach. You know where to follow us, you know where to follow us. At Bud and Roach, at Bud Roach. Thank you for tuning in. 
to the Button Road Show. Button Road.